From the boxing ring to your podcast station, here are the three guys that talk nothing but boxing, Ricky and Ricky and Juan. What's up, guys, and welcome back to another episode of Boxing Talk. This is your host, Juan, and alongside with me, I have my partners like always. I got Kike. What's up, guys? And I got Ricky. What's up, Juancho? What's up, Kike? What's up, what's up, What's up, Cole? How are you? How are you guys this weekend? Good, good, man. That's good. Nothing like uh, Easter Sunday. Yeah, we had Easter yesterday. Hope you guys had a good time with your families out there and to all the fans out there listening as well. Hope you guys had a good time. Did you guys eat a lot? Well, if you guys like celebrate Easter, that is. We forget not everybody uh, celebrates that. Did you guys uh, eat a lot? I definitely ate a lot. Yeah? Yeah. Same, same here. Nice. Uh, uh, don't forget about Cole in the background. We do have Cole. Just you guys never see him, but he is back there somewhere. Cole, the producer. <laughs> We've been wanting to show Cole, but he wants to remain a mystery. So we'll keep it like he's, that. He's like that one group you call anonymous, and you know he's just there, <laughs> just watching over you. Yeah. No, but all joking aside, man. Big ups to Cole, man. He's been really helping. He's been instrumental to this to this podcast. He's been helping us a lot, with, especially with the YouTube. I know that's a huge undertaking. So Cole, I know you can hear us. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Cole. Thanks, Cole. We do appreciate you. Um, but you know, guys, we are in episode sixty, man. We've, you know, we're a long way out, you know, uh, into into this uh, trend that we're going with this uh, boxing talk. But uh, with that being said, we had a hell of a weekend. Um, you know, I think this title is gonna be weekend of the welterweights. So, it's a crazy weekend, guys. And we had a great, you know, a great fight. Um, I think I would say it was like fight. In my opinion, one of the fight of the year um, that we'll be, you know, overlooking later on and going over, which is like the Errol Spence Jr. versus uh, your Demis Hugas. But you know, uh, let's let's go into our first fight. Kike, you want to give us the first uh, hot, uh, fight recap? So the one that started off on the Showtime um, side of it wasn't the pay per view, but it was the main event uh, for Showtime. It was between Radza Butaev, the Russian, versus. A Manta Stanionis, the Lithuanian. I know we were going Butaev um, in this fight. Um, he was coming off a good win, beating Jamal James. But man, Stanionis brought it to him, guys. Uh, it was a good fight. Um, I don't think it should have been a split decision. I think it was a clear win for Stanionis. But hey, it ended up being a split decision. He still won. Um, he improves his record to 14 and 0 now, nine KOs. Uh, judges had the fight nine to three and eight to four for Stanionis, and one judge had it seven to five for Butayev. Um, my question is now, with the way Stanionis performed, do you guys think this makes him a top welterweight now, and does this put him on the map of of those young, up and coming uh, welterweights? Yeah, he uh, definitely want to answer. That? Yeah, he definitely. I don't know, man. I, I think so. I would like to. I would like to see him with you know, like you stated, compa. I would like. I would personally like to see him with Virgil Ortiz, just because I'm a huge fan of Virgil Ortiz, uh, and I think that would be a good, good, uh, uh, not test, but a good, a good bout uh, for yeah. Ortiz. I I personally think that he needs to um, not go directly into these, you know, you know, well more known fighters. I think he still should take it one step at a time like we said there's levels to this and i think he's he's got his first you know good win uh why not keep it going with another uh you know uh another kind of known guy uh, you know you can say he's a guy that's been tested and all um but not 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 people up there already not none of the champ not the champion obviously not another champs mm-hmm. but you know why not i mean this forward? win this win does make him the wba welterweight champion yeah so technically, this fight makes him the mandatory to Errol Spence. Um, but like he's you guys said, he's not ready. I don't think. Although he did uh, bully, he bullied he bullied Butayev, uh, which is surprising because Butayev is a he's his output is crazy. He put he throws nonstop punches, and he was the bigger guy. But Stanionis just bullied him. He was just throwing the stronger, more firm punches, even late in the rounds. Um, and Stanny Onis, I mean, he surprised me, guys. But this was when we previewed it last week. Uh, we said it was going to be a 50-50 fight, and it really was. It was a good good fight. Um, 
to be honest with you, obviously it got overshadowed by Spence Ugas, the whole hype on that. But to me, this was this was the the fight of the weekend to me. It was the most competitive fight. Um, as we're gonna go over the other ones, we're gonna let you guys know what happened with the other ones in that card. But yeah, Stanionis, I would like to see him with the um shoot, one of the young guys, Connor Ben, um, with uh Virgil or Jerron Ennis, the winner of mm-hmm. Clayton and Ennis, uh or even against uh, Mikey Garcia or a Navanesian, I mean, or shoot, I mean, a P- another PBC fighter, uh, why not take on Ugas? Ugas can try to become a mandatory again and get that WBA uh, uh, strap. That way he makes him a mandatory again. But um, as we're going to go over, we're going to know why uh, Ugas can't return soon. But, yeah, guys, I we took an L in this one. But, hey, Stanionis deserves it, man. Mm-hmm. Stanionis did a really good job. Yeah, definitely. I don't know how you guys think um, he looked. I think he looked great, like you were saying. But, you know, someone, like you said, is he ready for this chance? I don't think he is. But I think, you know, someone that he can be ready and with someone that had a good fight as well this, this past weekend was uh, uh, Cody Crowley, you know. Yeah. I think that's maybe two guys that, you know, just came up. They're showing that they, you know, they're competing, that they're hungry. Why not have those two do get out between amongst each yeah. other? That's right. That's um, another guy that fought this weekend on the pay-per-view card, though. Mm-hmm. And you know, speaking about Cody Crowley, you know he went against Josecito Lopez. Um, Crowley actually uh, got the win via unanimous decision and improves his record to twenty one zero with nine KOs. Uh, he knocked down Lopez once in the seventh round, um, and judges had it nine to one, eight to two, and eight to two for Crowley. So obviously, you know, you could tell Crowley had uh, a, a you know more than enough win on all three judges. He was took over Lopez. We all knew this was going to happen. We saw it. Uh, Lopez was more, is more towards the end of his career now. He's an yeah. older guy. Um, so, I don't know. What do you think, Ricky? Do you think Cody is ready for one of the champions? Do you think he should wait, fight out another prospect? What do you think? It's like, it's like you guys said earlier, even with Virgil Ortiz, Juan, like you said it earlier, even fighting Virgil Ortiz would be a good fight for him, I believe. And about Josito Lopez, man, he, that guy should just retire, man. Uh, I don't think he didn't look good. Yeah. Uh, uh, like I said in the, in the previous episode, I thought he was already retired, and then he's fighting again. That was kind of weird. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think was, even his corner was like you know, uh, kind of questioning for the Cito Lopez. Uh, but no, I think Crowley should fight another uh, one of the young bucks like Richard Ortiz. Um, I don't know if he's ready, you know, for the for the big dogs. Uh, I think with the, with Cody Tamien, I would like him to just. You know, fight somebody I, else. That's I hate to say it, compa, but these PBC guys, these PBC welterweights, are not going to fight Virgil, man. They're no, gonna, I, know. I know we want to see it, um, but these PBC guys, as we know, they they tend to stay in house. Mm-hmm. Um, Virgil's on the other side of the street, as they say in the boxing industry. He's with the Zone. He's with Golden Boy. For some reason, PBC does not like to do business with Golden Boy at times. So I can see, uh, although I would like to see him with Virgil. Uh, I I can see Crowley versus Stanionis next. That would be more mm-hmm. the more likely fight, and especially uh, Crowley, because they both won. Yeah, especially they both won. They're both welterweights. They're both undefeated. Why not keep challenging each other? And this can be Crowley's been speaking a good game. Not not speaking like uh, being cocky about it, but he you can tell he's hungry. He wants to challenge for the titles. Um, so. Th- Facing Stanionis would place him in a perfect position. If he wins, um, if he can defeat Stanionis, Stanionis would make him the mandatory to Errol Spence because uh, right now uh, uh, Spence has that WBA belt um, and then um, the super belt, and then uh, Stanionis has the regular belt. So it would make him a, a mandatory. Guys, this this fight, like we said, was going to be an easy win for Crowley this is mm-hmm. just this is one of those fights where it's a young up-and-coming guy uh facing a, a deteriorating veteran but he still has that popular name uh and that's what that's all that was it's just to add a notch on the belt um and put a name on his resume to say oh he beat Josecito Lopez Granite Lopez was already 37 I agree with Ricky uh Lopez you had a great career you fought the best yeah, but you did. lost against the best. You lost. You, he's like another Gabe Rosado where he faced the elite guys and would always lose. The only elite guy he beat was Victor Ortiz. Other than that, he lost to Canelo. He lost to now Crowley. Uh, he's lost to a ton of guys, man. He, yeah, he's he never been able to beat the elite guys. So if you can't beat these top guys, you're just not going to be a champion, dude. 
unfortunately, Josecito was one of those guys. Yeah, he he came up, he fought the best, but he never became a champion. Um, so, Josecito Lopez, sorry, man, but you got to hang it up, dude. Yeah, poor guy. Yeah, but man. Yeah, I'd like to see Crowley versus Stanionis. That's a good fight right there. I think that's the easier fight to make as well since they both just fought. They both just won. Uh, you know, yeah. they'll have the same rest period. Why not make it happen? Like we said, uh, Stanionis technically should be facing Spence, dude. But come on, man. We all know who Spence is going to go for next. We all know who he's going for next. So Stanionis, sorry, but you got to wait in line. Yeah, definitely. You know, the big fish is hungry. So yeah. Uh, speaking about the big fish, just dive into this uh, freaking fight, man. This fight was crazy. It was back and forth. Uh, I think... It was one of the fights that we both didn't know where, well, all three of us didn't know where it was going. Uh, it was either going to go one way to another. It was 50-50, like we said it before. These fights amongst champions are, are, are uh, crazy. Errol Spence you know? and Lugas? Yeah. Errol Spence Let's talk about uh, uh, Cruz first, no? Yeah. Because Cruz was the, the co-main. I was, I was going to say, okay, okay, we can do that. Because, you know, that's the main that's the main show. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. Uh, Ricky, how about you break it down for us since I know you like uh, Cruz. Dude, you know, uh, and this is why I'm still, even though he fought an older, you know, older, older opponent, uh, Isaac Cruz was able to, you know, he looked great. So Isaac Cruz wins via uh, fifth round TKO and improves his record to 23 to one draw, one draw record. His record? Yeah. Yeah, one draw. uh, 23 victories, two defeats, one draw. And 16 knockouts. So he knocked down Gabor once in the second third and fourth rounds prior to the TKO and was winning all the rounds and all three judges score cards. Uh, like, like I said, guys, Cruz looked great. I, we were expecting this from Cruz already uh, fighting Gamboa uh, and Copa, you know, like you stated in the previous episode, if he didn't beat Gamboa, he was going to be questionable to me. Like, why did you beat Gamboa? Everybody else has beaten Gamboa. So mm-hmm. I like his performance. He came in. He's a freaking dog. I cannot wait to see Cruz on the ring again. What do you guys think? Yeah. I mean, Cruz did good, guys, but my it's still questionable for me because, like Ricky said, he faced an older man, 40 years old already. Uh, mm-hmm. Gamboa's been a punching back to all these young up-and-comers. I will give Cruz credit in this. He he knocked down Gamboa more times than anybody else has. Uh, Tank couldn't knock down Gamboa, even with the fucking broken ankle that Gamboa had at that time. It wasn't broken, but he had like a, I don't know, something was wrong with his ankle that fight. And he didn't TKO him till the 12th round. Terrence Crawford uh, TKO'd Gamboa, but knocked him down once. Cruz managed to knock him down four times. But at the same time, I hate to be the, the, the bad guy here, but again, guys, he knocked down a 40-year-old man. I mean, he faced an old, much older Gamboa than, he, than the other guys did. So That's true. I mean, he's 40 years old. Gamboa is just he's he's not there to win anymore. He's just there to get a paycheck. He's paycheck. there to be a stepping stone for these young guys because he was a former champion. But of course, you know, as people that, you know, just go on the hype train. Oh, Cruz looked great against Tank. Oh, let's keep on the hype that Cruz hype train. Of course, they're going to blow him up. That's probably um, uh, an unpopular opinion. I know, guys, but let's see Cruz against a, a, a Another top guy. He did look great against Davis. He did to Gamboa what he was supposed to do. But look at all these top lightweights. Cruz needs to step in there with some of these top lightweights, not these forty-year-old washed-out former champions. Man, he needs to. He needs to face guys like like a Jojo Diaz or the new yeah. Argentine uh, Argentino that came up, Gustavo Limos. Uh, he's got Lomachenko, but Lomachenko's on the war. Um, I don't think he's ready for the champions like Cambosas or Haney. Plus, they're going to be duking it out for a while. But, guys, the guys that they've been chirping at each other for a while and I think is the perfect fight for him mm-hmm. next, Ryan Garcia. Yeah, that'd be you great. Know, he, I mean, Cruz even called out Ryan Garcia um, uh, after his fight. And then when Ryan Garcia had his fight, that's a fight we said that that fight needs to happen next. Mm-hmm. Ryan Garcia versus uh, Isak Cruz. That would be a great fight that'd right be, there. That would be a great fight. What about you, Juan? What you think? I was gonna say Ryan Garcia. Uh, right be- uh, after you mentioned it, I think it's it's a great fight. Ryan Garcia, you know all that shit talking that, uh, you know Pitbull did towards him. Why not back it up and show him that he won't back out of this, out of these fights anymore, and he can take on the best in the division. 
Um, if Ryan Garcia wants to be taken serious, I think that's what he needs to do. Uh, because of right now, yes, he had one good fight. He had one good win. But it, it's still it's still doubtable to a lot of people where whether it, if he's going to uh, take the sport serious or he's just another, you know, uh, uh, you can say just a showboat uh, or show showman guy out there showing uh, that he just here for the for the spotlight, not for the, really the the action. You know. Now the other thing would be is if that fight does happen, would they show it on the zone or would they show it on Showtime? That's that's one thing they're gonna have to they're gonna fucking argue about who's gonna be the, the zone pay per view. I, I think it's mostly the zone. Look who the bigger guy is. It's exactly. Ryan Garcia. I mean, the yep. bigger name is Garcia, but is Cruz going to want to admit to that? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I think it'll, I think it'll benefit Cruz because he's going to get a payday. Oh, it de- oh, it definitely would. But yeah. uh, when these guys get big, I mean, even guys like Cruz, yeah. who you think are humble and, and stuff like that, even, I mean, you heard him in the press conference. He was like, as long as the numbers are correct, yeah, I'll sign the contract. That's all these guys want is this, bro. Which I get it. I mean, you gotta, you gotta. You, they're doing this not for fun either. They're doing this to support and their then, families. And then Isaac Cruz, uh, he's coming from humble beginnings too, uh, as we saw in the yeah. video when they followed. Uh, I forgot which album yeah. was. I get it. At the end of the day, they all deserve to get paid. But yeah. if you want, if you want to dare to be great, you have to take some some sacrifices sometimes. So we'll see. We'll see if that fight happens. Hopefully, that's the the next fight to happen. Yeah, but then moving on forward to the you know the fight that I think we were all excited about was the Errol Spence Jr. versus Yudanis Ugas. Uh, this is a great fight, guys. Uh, you know Spence wins via tenth round TKO to become the UIBF, WBA, and WBC uh, unified welterweight champion, and improves his record to a twenty eight and zero with twenty two KOs. Um, all judges had it seven to two for Spence prior to the TKO. Uh, you know. Uh, you know, I want to say it's, you know, it, it just sucks for Ugas because he, you know, basically was like said no more. The referee said no more. They called it off. They waited off. Uh, but, you know, Ugas suffered a right uh, orbital fracture. Um, so, obviously, if he kept going, he, potentially he could ha- suffer major consequences to his eyes. So, uh, what do you guys think about the stoppage? And what do you guys think about the fight? Uh, the I was going to say, Juan, I don't know what the fuck fight you were watching that you said this fight was back and forth because this was it the Errol Spence show. No, it was not, dude. At one Even point, the judge, at, no, it was not. Seven rounds point, to two. At, at one point, at one, it was with, bro, with seven rounds to two. That is not one, a back and forth. A, a, a back and was, forth. A back and forth. What round one? <laughs> no, no, dude. A back and forth fight would have been if it was five to four prior to the knockout, dude. Errol Spence came back from a 16, 17-month layoff. He dominated. He showed why he's the big fish. Uh, The only time that Ugas maybe showed his prowess was when he rocked Spence. And that's only because Spence's dumbass spit his mouthpiece out. Oh, that's right. And he got distracted. He was focused on picking up his mouthpiece, and that's when Ugas got him. Other than that, dude, Spence. That's right. I mean, Spence broke his damn bone for a reason and this is the second guy he breaks an orbital bone on he broke kel brooks kel brooks eyeball and he freaking broke now ugas and and as far as the stoppage one i think it like for what there was no point in yeah he was still standing on his two feet and i know there's the old school people like you juan they're gonna be like oh as long as he's standing on his feet keep going but why risk this man's health when there was exactly. no way of him winning that fight anymore he was getting beat up he was getting dominated i, I thought the there ref was no reason good. There was no reason for him to continue to take punishment and potentially lose his fucking eyeball, dude. I well, remember when you texted us, I told you he could lose his eyeball, and look what it came out with, a fracture of his right orbital uh, bone. He could have lost his eye, dude. But yeah. even so then, it, it's like it's like that one fight. I forgot uh, who were the two fighters recently. I think it was last month. Uh, when I was, I thought we always going to take the L and we got that last second KO. Oh, against uh, Michael Conlon? Oh yeah, there you go, Michael Conlon. Conlon and um, Wood. Yeah, it's like, what if you let it go? Yeah, all the way but system? but Wood was not getting beat up the way Ugas was, dude. Yeah, Wood was getting dominated, but Conlon is not the type of puncher Spence is, bro. Spence was punching him and hurting him, dude. It was this was, I, I felt bad for Ugas because I like Ugas. Uh, he seems like a hum- humble guy. 
he seems like a great father and he was getting beat up even for me i you know me guys i like my fair share of fights but damn even that like to me yeah, I was like, that damn, guy this guy up, man. he got beat up and th- that's what i keep saying about these people that are on the terrence crawford uh hype train that you know errol spence makes these champions look ordinary to make a champion look ordinary that goes to show you're at another level dude because champions usually don't make other champions make it uh, like that easy of a fight and in reality spence had no trouble with them i know the judges had it seven two but in reality i had it eight to one maybe nine nothing the only round that maybe ugas got was the round he hurt uh spence but other than that yeah dude spence is he's the big fish i agree man he's he's a beast i know there's gonna be people what about you ricky what do you think about the fight yeah, like like you guys said, like um, I thought Errol Spence really beat up Ugas. Uh, poor Ugas, when I felt bad, um, his eyes. Sorry, guys, it feels like there's a mosquito in the freaking room. Um, <laughs> that's why I'm like, fuck. Oh, there he is. Oh, um, yeah, there's a uh, yeah Uga. I think Ugas. Yeah, pobrecito. I felt bad for him, dude. I think Errol Spence dominated this fight, and like you said, Kike, I forgot about that. That that when he dropped yeah. his uh, mouthpiece, it was stupid because he was like. And then he got so distracted, and Ugas just landed that. Yeah. So I don't know what the hell he was thinking, but uh, yeah. He almost spread, got dropped, dude. Yeah. Errol Spence dominated, man. He is a big fish. I, I, even though he had, you know, that car accident, he had uh, surgery, he still came in and came in victorious. Dude, for so, this guy, I don't even want to mention the other welterweights. The only fight for Errol Spence is Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford, That's absolutely. the only fight, bro. Make Terrence Crawford versus Errol Spence. We've been wanting to see it for five years now. That's the fight that needs to happen. Both guys are top five pound-for-pound fighters. Let's see who's the best. Hey, guys, dare to be great. Canelo and Triple G did it, and they fought twice already. You guys are entering your mid-30s, and you guys haven't even fought each other. So come on now, step it up. No, why not have Kel Brook go against him? Come on. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I, we all know. Don't, we get, me, the fucking don't get me wrong. Kel Brook, yeah, of course, Kel Brook is good, but he already got <laughs> smacked by it. That's actually who, uh, that's how Errol Spence got his first title, dude. And I remember watching that fight. And this is what I like about Errol Spence and like Devin Haney, guys. They do it the old school way. At that time, Brook was the champion. He went to Brook's backyard. He didn't pull no bullshit of, hey, come fight in my hometown because he's not the champion. He has no right to do that. That's some shit Mayweather would do. Even though I'm mm-hmm. the challenger, come fight in my... No, he went all the way out to the UK and took the strap from Kell Brook. And Devin Haney's about to go take Cambosa's strap too. That's how it's done, bro. That's, that's the cool. kind of fighters... That's the kind of fighters I like. Old school, they're like... They go and take that. And not only that, he took it from him by knockout. Like the old school way. That's how you take it from a champion, dude. So, yeah, dude. Spence looked like he had no ring rust whatsoever. He looked amazing, dude. Yeah, he looked I mean, amazing. What, what if your boy Haney doesn't take the strap? Oh fuck! I hope he does. I think he will, but <laughs> I don't know. It's it. That's why it's a. That's why it's a, a undisputed lightweight fight, man. Because they're both good fighters. Hey man, you know anything? Anything can happen in boxing, and a fight's a fight. Exactly. So you know. Exactly. Um, besides that, uh, Ricky, let us know what's going on, and let's go on to the news. Let us know what's going on with your boy. Uh, Andy Reese. This is a so, fucking mess again. Dude. So former <laughs> former unified heavyweight champion Andy Reese Jr. will meet ex Glory boxing champion Tyrone Spong in a ten round pay per view bout on July sixteenth at the Plaza de Toros, Mexico City. Uh, trailer Fight Club announced. So I don't know about that man. Him fighting an ex ex uh, Glory bo- kickboxer. He's fucking fighting Luis Ortiz, man. The reason we said that news first, guys, is because freaking Triller let out let out that news. They even had it on their network that it was gonna happen. What the yeah. fuck is up with Triller, bro? What Triller who's handling their, their, it up. their media? Oh yeah, yeah. Like it goes from they announced that he was gonna be fighting Tyrone Spung. Like like Ricky said, who the hell is ex glory kickboxing champion? To like, nope, scratch that. He's actually fighting Luis Ortiz. Luis Ortiz. Uh, like, what the hell? Like, the good thing, guys, it, it, the the second set of news that he's fighting Luis Ortiz, that came from ESPN, which we tend to, they're more of a reliable source. So uh, 
ESPN said that they're going to be fighting in late summer, which is most likely um, either going to be uh, August or September. So let, if that fight happens between Andy Ruiz and, and, and Luis Ortiz, that's the fight we've been asking for for Andy Ruiz. And uh, let's hope that happens, guys. Fuck, I'm excited I, I, if that fight Lu happens. Luis Ortiz is going to be King Kong, right? Yeah, King yeah, Kong. Yeah. The one that we saw the first first ever fight of this year. Yeah. Oh, that's like right. That's five, right. It was like five knockdowns in the first like two or three rounds. Is it? Is going to be like? You're right the... there. Whoa. Sorry. Sorry. You're sorry. Right there, Rick. <laughs> oh, clappy man. Oh, freaking. Sorry, oh, guys. Yeah. This is gonna be the. This is gonna be the battle of the battle of the monsters here. The destroyer. Yeah, the destroyer versus King Kong. Yeah, <laughs> <there> you, <laughs> go, uh, you know, but for our next uh, news, you know, this is something that we already announced. Uh, he, he was having a fight, but we didn't know he had. An, uh, who his opponent was going to be, but Elite Alvarez uh, actually got announced to have a, an opponent now. Um, he will be taking on Mexican heavyweight fighter Mario uh, Aguilar, uh, who's 22 and 7 and 18 KOs at a cruiserweight in Canada. Uh, so, what do you guys think about this? Kiki, let us know. Bro, we already know that. We already knew when it's to be announced, they're going to fight no namers. <laughs> and that, okay. even though he's a fellow Mexican, uh, fighter Mario Aguilar is a no namer. Look at his record: twenty-two victories, seven defeats. This is supposed to be for Alvarez to test the waters in the cruiserweight division, since he's going to be fighting at two hundred pounds now. Um, I mean, he is taking on a bigger guy in Mario Aguilar, who normally is a heavyweight, but he's going to go down to cruiserweight to uh, fight Alvarez. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. It's going to be in Canada. Um, yeah, we'll see how it goes for LA. That I, I, I'm still curious to see what network's going to show it because I don't know if he's still with ESPN or not. And it's supposed to be a Cinco de Mayo fight. That's on uh, uh, Ricky's birthday there. So we'll, we'll see. And Jeez. it's on a Thursday too. So what? Go, go. Yeah, I remember I said that. Like, it's going to be on a Thursday, which is weird. Yeah. But uh, they don't want to take, obviously, Canelo's going to take the show for that weekend. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, if it. it if it if it does come out on the network, I'll watch it. I mean, it's a couple of days before that Canelo fight, so um, I'll be in Vegas that weekend, uh, the weekend of the Canelo fight. So maybe I don't know, might be able to sneak in there. Damn, he went. Yeah. He got some tickets. You know, Ricky, he got some tickets to the fight. He didn't even tell us. He just. Got Are you, did you get tickets to the fight? You get? No, I, I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> I I hope I oh, get yeah? tickets. Oh yeah. crap. Hey, Actually, Cole, hey, with, Cole, the producer, is going to be out there with me too. So we'll see. Yeah. Cole, maybe we can sneak Damn. in. Man. And and, and <laughs> yeah, we'll go twist. up on the I'm we'll go up too. on the we'll go up on the rafters if we have to, and then Cole will uh, get some content <laughs> hey, that way. Just just wear just wear like a shirt that says security. You guys you guys yeah exactly. You guys there. <laughs> hey, uh, have you guys have you guys seen that YouTuber? Uh, yeah, you're the one who showed us. Uh, oh yeah, he dresses uh, I forgot up his each name, time. Yeah. For a main yeah, event and Super Bowl, everything he sneaks in, it's like yeah, we dude. should just try that bucket. Just go in there yeah. with different. <laughs> there was a one time that Canelo uh, called him out. He was like, "Hey, get out of my shot!" Remember? Yeah, oh, no, that exactly. wasn't him. That wasn't him. That was, that was, that was a different, different guy. YouTuber. Oh, yeah, well, okay. guy. Yeah. yeah. See, uh, but... Juan knows more about his YouTubers than he knows saying these names. <laughs> no, I only follow <laughs> the stuff that goes on with like events. That's funny. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, moving on forward, something that happened at another event, dude, this past uh, weekend, it was uh, David uh, Benavides versus uh, Jamal Charlo, who had an altercation in the, at the Spence and Ugas event. Man, That's I saw fun. the videos. I saw, I saw stuff, videos. They were they were going yeah. at it, dude. I thought yeah. like what, they're probably faking it. They were about to just, fight, dude. You yeah, know, they're I, causing promotion to stay yeah. relevant. Um, and hope I mean, hopefully they do get out sometime soon. I mean, they both got fights coming up. Hopefully, if they handle business in their fights, hopefully that's the next fight that happens, man. That that fight's got to happen, because they both want Canelo. But dude, you guys got to prove yourself to fight Canelo. Fight each other. Mm -hmm. uh, plan. Exactly. Fight these guys. Benavides. Fight these guys. Charlo. Tú también. Andrade. All these guys. You all got to fight each other if you guys want at Canelo. And like Canelo said, the winner of all the, of that Bay, little Bay. mini tournament, whatever they have, then go ahead. Uh, take on Canelo again. Yeah. Um, but, you know, Kike, uh, let us know what's going on with uh, Connor Ben. So, guys, you guys know I have not been giving Connor Ben his credit, but I hate to admit. Actually, I don't, I'm not going to say hate to admit, but I think to me now, guys, the guy might be a top welterweight now because a lot of people would compare him to Virgil Ortiz, Jerron Ennis as these young up and coming welterweights. And you guys know me, I would always say, oh, no, Conor Ben's just not there yet. He's just not on that level. 
But after seeing him this weekend, guys, and how he defeated Chris Van Heerden, who's been in there with Spence, who's been in there with some of these top names, uh, he took him out in two rounds, guys. Uh, the man improves his record to 21 and 0 now, 14 KOs. What do you guys think? Are you guys on the same boat as me, or you guys disagree? But is this does this win now solidify him as a top welterweight to you guys? If if he wasn't already a top welterweight to you guys, what do you guys think? I've always liked Conor Bannon, man, and, and honestly, I know you don't you didn't really like him ever, but. I it's thought, not that okay. It's not that I didn't like him, Juan. I just didn't think he's he had done enough. He hadn't fought enough guy. Like, yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Oh, you guys, it, it froze for me. I don't know. Not really. Yeah, yeah. Um. But yeah, Connor Ben, dude. It wasn't. I I like his fight style. I just I. I didn't agree with the hype yet because his resume just wasn't there for me. But now he's defeated Chris Algieri who was a former champ, and then he's defeated this guy now, Van Heerden, who's been in there with some top guys. So this, to me, that's why it makes him now, as you know me, dude, I'm a tough critic, I know that, but for me now, Conor Ben is a top welterweight. Now he's in the same conversation as Jerron Ennis and Virgil Ortiz. Um, I know our guys at Blue Line uh, Boxing Podcast uh, like Conor Ben too. They were kind of you know, listening to some of their episodes, they like Conor Ben too. I, I've always liked Ben, dude. I just, I, I, it's kind of like uh, some of these up and comers. They just got to keep proving themselves. Yeah, ex- exactly. Yeah. Um, uh, but you know, uh, Ricky, what do you think about Conor Ben? Or you think yeah, he's no, a top I, guy I, or no? I think, I think he's up there. I mean, yeah, like about like Enrique was saying, man. Uh, I, th- I think he's proved himself, and I mean. I'm just excited to see who he fights next and see how he does with one of those with the yeah. top guys. Uh, to, and then for sure, you know. To I think me, for, the two... Go ahead, Juan. My I bad. think for him to be tested in a measuring stick, a good fight for him, someone that just came out of the loss would be Mikey Garcia. Why not Bro, take on Mikey one. Garcia? And he just... He won. Mikey Garcia lost. If he, Mikey Garcia is already on his end of I his hate career. To, I hate to say this, guys. I think Conor Ben would beat his take ass. Him. I think so. I just it's cause Mikey Garcia is very talented, but he's just uh, he's lost the hunger, dude. He's he's, he's already been declining. Buying, yeah, he's been fighting. I mean, not fighting. He's been buying all these cars now. He's buying. You know, he's into that now. That's 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 good. You that's the fruit of your labor, man. Uh, the guy fought hard, a good career. I think he would whip Garcia, dude. No, well, but yeah, guys, even... uh, Connor Ben. I mean, to me, the the. The reason why this was the weekend of the welterweights, first of all, there was a lot of welterweight fights. Two is that two guys cemented themselves to me in 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 their top contenders now, and that's a Manta Stanionis who made a name for himself this weekend, and Connor Ben to me who made themselves, and they finally said, you know what, we're just not we're not prospects anymore. We're here, and we're here to to contend, and mark. we're here to we're here to make a mark. Uh, we're not scared of these champions. Uh, we'll take on anybody, so we'll see. I'd like to see. I mean, the easiest fight to make, even though uh, only because they're on the same side of the street, would be Conor Ben Virgil Ortiz. They're both they're both the zone, and I know everyone would love to see that fight, bro. Everyone would love to see that fight because if you, to get Stan Jonas, that's gonna be tough because Stan Jonas is PBC. If he tries to go for the winner of Ennis and Clayton, they're both PBC. David Avanesian, that's a good next fight for him too. David Avanesian is the zone. Virgil Ortiz is the zone. Mikey Garcia, kind of a free agent, but he's been fighting on the zone lately too. So that's three good options for him. Uh, shit, even uh, Kel Brook. Kel Brook's right there for him, but Kel Brook's looking to fight Chris Eubank potentially. Uh, Chris Eubank Jr. Your Dennis Ugas, he's on the PBC side. Keith Thurman's on the PBC f- side. And then Errol Spence is on PBC and Terrence Crawford kind of a free agent, but nobody's going to get Crawford than, other than Spence, dude. I think that fight's going to happen next. But as far, as far as focusing on Connor Ben, he has those four options. David Avanesian, Virgil Ortiz, Mikey Garcia, and Kel Brook. Those are the DAZN welterweights right there. Yeah, I think between those two, um, uh, I think Virgil Ortiz or My- Mikey Garcia is the ones that he's looking forward to. But I think it's yeah. a Mikey Garcia would be a good measuring stick. Oh, for, for sure. So yeah, I dude, and it, hey, it, and it's it's not just a good measuring stick fight, but it's also a good comeback fight for Mikey. So that if Mikey comes in prepared and if Mikey beats a young up and comer like Connor Ben, 
that shoots up Mikey Garcia up everyone's oh, yeah. list again. Everybody's going to be like, oh, he's back. He beat a good young guy. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. Hopefully, yeah, that's actually not a bad idea, Juan. DeZone, if you're listening, make Connor Ben versus Mikey Garcia next, man. That's a You that's guys a heard it here fight. first in boxing talk. And, and if, if you're listening, give me my props because uh, I should be the one Shut arranging the that fight up. then. Shut <laughs> the <hell up. laughs> Uh, but you know, let's uh, before we get into the next news, uh, let's go to our. I don't want to end in the sad note for our news, so let's do yeah. the sad note first. It's you know, team boxer Ali Tazim, Tazim um, who had been uh, compared to uh, Amir Khan, has tragically passed away the following uh, away this past you know Sunday Easter morning uh, yeah, in an accident. So uh, car accident actually, guys. So you know, this is something sad. We don't like to hear any. Whether it's any type of person, whether famous or not, you know, we, we do feel everyone, the families, you know, they're in loss um, and grieving at this moment. Uh, but, you know, a Pro Bellum Boxing Company confirmed. Um, so uh, promoter James John was from the from Pro Bellum, who was the one that spoke out on this and confirmed this. And unfortunately, this is, you know, this, dude, tragic this is happened. this is sad news because this kid had he was getting hyped up to like they said, he was getting hyped up to be the next Amir Khan. Really? Amir Khan kind of took him under his wing, was training with him. Uh, Pro Bellum had just signed him. They were literally waiting until he turned 18 till he was going to make his pro debut. He had like the thing, things were going up for this kid. He had just signed with the promotional company. Uh, he was only 17, I think 17, 18 guys. He was about to make his professional debut, um, highly touted uh, in the amateur ranks. When you get compared to Amir Khan, even though Amir Khan, you know, these last few fights weren't so good for him. Amir Khan is a legend still in the sport. And to be compared to Amir Khan, uh, that's pretty good. And it's it just sucks when someone's so young with so much promise. It goes to show you guys, life ain't promised, man. Uh, so much upside, so much <clears throat> upside going on for this kid. Just when things seemed like they were going on the up from, look, life happened, guys. And, and unfortunately, he lost his life. And uh just uh want to pray for for his family and uh, what a sad time what a sad time man um we hate to discuss these kind of news guys but um at the same time you know for those of you that were following ali tazim unfortunately he did pass away yesterday in easter easter morning yeah so you know i can just go out to his family and all his fans out there that were ready you know following him um you know we feel for you guys and you know, uh, tragedies do happen in this world, unfortunately. Um, but moving on forward to the next set of news, uh, this other teenager will now turn the door. Um, uh, Ashton Silve, a guy that we recently have gone to an event for him. Uh, and We interviewed out. him and everything, too. We interviewed and, and mm -hmm. are following now, um, you know, to pretty close, actually. So I think we made a really good connection with him. Uh, has now signed with Jake Paul's most valuable promotions. And... Uh, MVP promotions. So that's crazy, dude. I did not see that coming. That's awesome. It's, it's that's good well, for him. Especially since yeah. he has his own promotion company. I was just like, yeah, what the Hey, but okay. at the same time, man, he has to be honest with himself. Mm -hmm. Um Ashton Silva's only 18, running his own promotion. Hey, you need help, man, when you're first starting up in the ranks. You need a bigger, you know, a guy like a Golden Boy company who's established himself or like a, a promotional company like a top rank or Pro Bellum, or, you know, or PBC. I mean, Jake Paul has the name already. He's already mm -hmm. signed Amanda Serrano. And look, by him signing Amanda Serrano, Amanda Serrano became the first millionaire female boxer. And she's That's like, crazy. she's like a lot. Of, if for those of you that don't know female boxing, now that those that because they know Jake Paul, they know of Amanda Serrano. Mm -hmm. So those of those that didn't know Ashton Silve, now they're going to know Ashton Silve because of Jake Paul. And because of Jake Paul, Jake Paul's already doing good promotion on him, saying, hey, this guy's the next number one boxing prospect, even though in reality it's not to knock on Ashton Silva, but Ashton Silva in reality probably not the number one boxing prospect right now. He's up there. He's up there. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, of course, Jake Paul putting his promotional hat on, hey, I've got the number one boxing prospect signed on. He's 7-0, seven, and oh, seven KOs from Long Beach. He's doing good work. He's putting videos of him out there. It's a good thing for Ashton Silva. Oh, and hell yeah. us, get, us getting to be there face-to-face uh, -face with Ashton before and getting to meet the, the, the guy and, 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 um, and, and seeing how humble he is, I'm happy for him, man. Even though I'm not too big a fan of Jake Paul, but it's, it's a good platform 
for him to grow his name to get known so good thing ashton maybe later on you know he can maybe use mvp as a stepping stone and when he gets big maybe start his uh not start but continue off his own promotion again yeah i mean obviously he's still keeping his promotion company for his other yeah. fighters he has signed to them yeah as well but you know him being signed to this like you said he is going to get more uh recognized around the world oh, yeah. just because jake paul is Obviously, he has his name out there already. He's famous for different things already. Um, he might so he might start putting Ashton Silva on on Jake Paul on, undercards on his, on his cards. Yeah, you know Jake Paul does have a fight supposedly coming up in August. Um, and then uh, Ashton's going to be fighting in May. In May. And then he probably will wait another three months to fight in August. I mean, he should handle business in May, and then he'll fight again in August. That's another good card he could fight on if Jake Paul does fight in August. Yeah, and then definitely. supposedly Logan Paul's going to be fighting in August too. So if Logan Paul, Jake Paul, uh, fight on the same card, and then uh, Ashton Silva's put on there, people are definitely going to uh, be like uh, watching this this guy. So good job, Ashton Silva. Um, thanks yeah, for the for opportunity you, of interviewing you again, and uh, we're happy for you, man. Don't forget about us when you get up there. Take us with you. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> uh, but uh, other than that, guys, you guys have any other news you want to add or anything? Last minute, no man no? let's let's uh let's get into our fights this weekend dude we yeah, got to so... get into our fights because uh ricky will be leaving us for vacation you know oh that's right we are God, human yeah. being guys we do get vacations even though uh we bust our ass here at boxing talk dude i'm excited but, uh, man tomorrow's my last day at work <sighs> yes nice dude i can't wait can't wait to oh, be yeah, let's get into some... yeah <laughs> so i won't see you guys for like 10 days i think yeah, Ricky's only going to miss one episode. I think the next episode, no, Rick? And then you'll be able mm -hmm. to record after that. Yeah. That's if, that's if he doesn't want to take an extra vacay and, and he's like, oh, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to stay. <laughs> no, no, I'll be able to record the next one. Maybe not uh, number 61, but 62. Yeah. We'll get your yeah. picks for the next episode, Tropas. We got to get sure. that record going. <laughs> for sure. If, yeah. yeah. But, you know, going on to our fight, our first fight, we do have John Real Casimero, someone who we've seen live, guys, um, yeah. versus Paul Butler. Um, this is for the WBO uh, uh, Bantamweight 118-pound title fight uh, at Echo Arena at Liverpool, uh, Merseyside, United Kingdom. Uh, this is on April 22nd, 2022 on FUBU TV, uh, 11 a.m. That's, that's actually on a Friday uh, for those of you that don't know, here in the States, uh, Fubo TV is an app. It's an app, right, Compa? I think it's like an app TV. Um, yeah, you can watch a bunch of sports. You can watch mm -hmm. a bunch of sports. If you already have a subscription, great. I think it's like 70 to 80 bucks, but you get multiple yeah, channels. Remember. But if you don't know about Fubo, you say screw $70, $80. You do get, if you've never signed on before, you do get a, a, a week for free. So... Sign on for that free week. Take advantage. Watch the fight. But don't forget to unsubscribe. <laughs> don't forget to delete bill. that account. Yeah, because if not, that $80 bill is going to come in next. And they do force you to go onto their website to delete it. It's not one of those where you could just uh, uh, delete the account in the app. You have to go on onto a, a, a laptop or something. Are you talking but... from experience? No, no, no. Oh. I'm just saying because... Uh, <laughs> Just you know, because I did sign on to Fubo TV for the last one using uh, oh. uh, uh, an email, and now I'm using a different one. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, sorry, Fubo TV. Uh, but uh, no, but yeah, just in case, just trying to help out our fans here for those that like boxing. Uh, sign on to Fubo TV for your free week, but don't forget to <laughs> to delete his, the account after. His, his other ones, his gamer, his gaming account is like that late night guy at Gmail. Yeah. King Kong but 69 yeah. to say none at hotmail.com. But yeah, guys, don't make... <laughs> uh, this one, I know normally fights are on, on Saturdays. This fight is on a Friday because, as we're going to discuss later after this fight, the big fight's on Saturday. So this one is on Friday. It's a Probellum uh, fight card. Uh, Casimero, who, uh, like Juan said, we did, our, we did get to see him live. And then Paul Butler, who actually liked our post uh, today. Um, so that was pretty cool. Thank so you, Butler. We'll see. It should be a good should be a good fight. Yeah. So we got our first fighter, John Real Quad, uh, Cuadro Alas Casimero, um, WBO uh, World Bantamweight Champion, thirty one and four with twenty one KOs. Orthodox fighter who he's five four at the age of thirty three. Uh, he's from 
uh, Ormac, Ormoc City uh, from the Philippines. Uh, last fight was Guillermo Regendao. You know, what a freaking Ooh. boring fight, guys. Yeah, that's uh, the all time yeah. most boring fight. <laughs> uh, all of us were yawning so much. Uh, yeah, actually. We, yeah, we were. were. A lot of people were, were booing them, they wanted more action. Um, but his notable opponents uh, were uh, Ramon, uh, Garcia, he's got Luis Alberto. Uh, Kike, you want to help me with that second name? Uh, Mur- oh, uh, Muruti, Muruti Emtelin, an uh, African fighter. Uh, then you got uh, all these other fighters that I'm not gonna go down the list. Dude, he has but, a great. He has a yeah. the point is he has a great resume, dude. He's got Rigandal, Sol- uh, Solani Tete. Uh, he's fought Sonny Edwards' brother, Charlie yes. Edwards. Uh, I'm not ruin rowing twice. Pedro Guevara. A lot of you guys might not know these names because these guys are in the lower oh, divisions and Casi so. Metal. Uh, before being a 118 pounder, he did fight as low as 108, I believe. So that's probably why you maybe don't know these names. But in those divisions, these guys were the top names. So he does have a good uh, resume. Yeah. He's a champion for a reason. And then you have his opponent, Paul Babyface Assassin Butler. Why is it? Do you know that the ba- the backstory to that kicking Babyface Assassin? Mm-hmm. Just because of the baby face? Does he look like a baby face? face? Yeah. 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 He's got a baby Jesus. face. Okay. Number one, WBO, not with all those punches, but you know. Uh, number one, WBO ranked. Uh, he's 33 and two with 15 KOs, orthodox. He's 5'6 at the age of 33 from Chester, uh, Cheshire, United Kingdom. Uh, he is uh, now living uh, in Elsmer uh, Port, uh, United Kingdom. Uh, his last fight was against Will, Will Bardo. Uh, Willie Bardo Garcia, he got a W um, from split decision in June 2021 with a 10 month layoff. And his notable opponent, uh, he's had quite a few, uh, which is now John Gran Casimero, Emmanuel Rodriguez, uh, Sulani Tete, and then he's got a Stuart uh, Hall. So, uh, yeah. what do you guys think about this? Who do you guys think is going to win? Break it down for us, Ricky. I think um, just based on the experience, um, because uh, John Riel Casimero does have a good resume, uh, but based on the on on the resume, the experience, and the record, I'm gonna go. Damn it! Um, you know, I'm gonna stick with John Riel Casimero. This actually, to me, guys, is gonna be a fifty fifty fight. Uh, sometimes, even when champions don't face the other champions, usually the other good fights are when champion faces faces the number one ranked. I mean, we saw it with Lee Wood and Michael Conlon. Uh, champion versus number one rank. Sometimes those are the even better fights, actually. Uh, so I know a lot of people, it, it, and look at it this way, guys. Butler is fighting in his hometown, and he's the challenger. You know what I mean? Um, and they're fighting in his home country. Uh, granted, you probably don't want to make fights in the Philippines. It's not going to sell out there. Uh, but still, the fact that it's in his backyard goes to show you that um, it's going to be it's gonna be a good. It's gonna be a good fight. I'm still gonna go Casi Metal, but uh, it's not gonna be an easy, easy fight. Especially because Casi Metal does have experience losing. He's already lost four times. Butler's only lost twice, so uh, should be a good 50-50 fight. Uh, I'll still go Casi Metal though on this one. You want to? I'm gonna go with Casi Metal too, the champion. You know, um, obviously, I don't. I don't think he did as well. And the last fight, because it was boring to us. Um, but I still do think that he's got it. He's a champion for a reason. He's going to slowly break down this fighter. And, you know, Casimero was willing to throw hands with Rigandau in that fight. Rigandau wasn't about it. Um, he was a bicycle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that last just... fight. I mean, it's tough when you're facing a guy that's on his bike, man. And that's yeah. why, you know, when uh, Brandon Lee fought this weekend, it was tough for him to get the KO because he fought a guy on his bike. When Ryan Garcia fought... It was tough for him to get the KO because he fought a guy on his bike. When you're fighting guys that are willingly wanting to stay away from you, it's tough, man. And that's what Kakasi Metal faced when uh, he faced Rigandau. But this guy, Butler, is going to come to him. It should make for a um, a better style of fighter for him to make uh, an actual fight of it. So it's going to be a good fight, guys. Yeah. So um, besides that, I think we're all going for Kakasi Metal. Yes. All right. 
you know, the, and we got the next fight. I think this is the fight of the weekend uh, to all of us. For sure. It's the bigger fight. For sure. Uh, you got Tyson. Literally Curry, bigger. Is, oh, yeah. Way bigger. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Whoa, easy got, there. <laughs> you got Tyson Fury versus Dillian White. Uh, you know, this is for the WBC heavyweight title fight. Uh, so, you know, guys, this is the fight. I think it's, it's going to be like the fight of the month, in my opinion. Hopefully it is. But this is a fight everyone's been looking forward to. Everyone's been wanting this fight. And it's finally happening. Um, it's going to happen at the Wembley Stadium, at Wembley, London, uh, United Kingdom. Uh, April 23rd, 2022, it is going to be on ESPN pay, uh, Plus pay-per-view for $74.99 for non-subscribers and $69.99 for subscribers. Um, Yay, get happen. a whole $5 off. Nice <laughs> for being a subscriber. Thank you, ESPN. <laughs> it's going to be at 11 a.m. here in the Pacific time. Um, obviously, it's going to happen that early because it is overseas. So by the time, you know, for them, it's already nighttime. Um, yeah. So, well, what main event will start for us like around two thirty ish, or even a bit probably later, like three? two, probably two or three p.m. Yeah. So that's here Pacific time. Um, and then you got the Gypsy King Tyson Fury WBC World Heavyweight Champion, uh, thirty one and O with uh and one with twenty two KOs. Orthodox Fighter six nine at the age yeah. of thirty three from Manchester the United Kingdom lives in Henderson, Nevada as of now. Um, but I think he's been training out there in, in the United Kingdom, right, for this yeah. fight. Yeah, I think oh, yeah. the last I think the last month or two he was out there. Yeah, obviously he still has a home out there, but lately he's been living out here in Vegas area. Yeah, and then his last fight was against uh, you know Wilder, such an epic fight. A lot of people said it was yep. fight of the year. Um, uh, he won by uh, TKO in the eleventh round. Uh, and this is a six-month layoff for him. And he's had, you know, notable fighters, like we mentioned right now, Dillian White, uh, uh, Vladimir uh, Klitschko, one of them, the Klitschko twins. And, you know, he's had he's fought the Klitschko. And then he's fought also uh, Steve Cunningham. So uh, that was back in April 2013. So he's fought some and really good fighters. Not to men- don't forget here. to mention um, he fought Wilder only three times. That's it. Oh, three times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, man. And then you got his opponent, Dillian, the body snatcher, White. Um, and he's a WBC interim heavyweight champion. At, he's, his record is 28-2 and 19 KOs, orthodox, 6'4", age of 34. Um, he is from Port Antonio, Jamaica, um, but, but now lives in Brixton, London, uh, the United Kingdom. Last fight was was, was against Alexander uh, Povetkin and won in the fourth round TKO. Um, in March 2021, so this is a 13th month layoff for him. Man, that's crazy. I thought that fight was just recently too, man. Yeah, dude. It seemed like just yesterday. And that was actually yeah. when we just started our podcast when we yeah. previewed his last fight. And then yeah, he's, he has notable mm-hmm. fighters as well, like J- uh, Joseph Parker, Anthony Joshua. Um, obviously, he won against Parker but lost to Joshua. And now uh, Tyson Fury. So uh, yeah. let us know, Kike. How do you think this fight's going to go? It's, uh, I think Tyson Fury is going to win, but you know me, I like to delve into the fa- different factors. The fact that, uh, Dillian White has been quiet this whole promotion, that could be a scary thing, man. He, he's on, he's a man on a mission, focused. A lot of people say that Dillian White's fight style, I, I do think Dillian White is a much better fighter overall than Deontay Wilder. And Fury, all he's been used to lately is Deontay Wilder. Dillian yeah. White, much better boxer. I'm not saying he has the same power as Wilder, but he is a much better overall boxer. We all know, guys, Wilder's not a fucking fighter, bro. He's just a puncher. This fucker just throws fucking bombs. Uh, White is more defensively sound. He's going to be defensively uh, responsible. Uh, but, dude, Tyson Fury, six foot nine. I mean, Dillian White, he's a big boy too, but six foot four against a six foot nine guy seems seems small. I mean, that's like Cole. Cole's like six four. He's a big dude, but imagine facing a six foot nine guy. That's that's tough. Six foot nine, close to three hundred pounds. Uh, but hey, man, this is the heavyweight division where all it takes is one punch. And as our compa Ricky always says, a fight is a fight. You never know with these fights, dude. Uh, all it takes. All it takes is one punch in the heavyweight division. That's why it's so popular, dude. 
But yeah, I'm gonna go Tyson Fury, guys. Un- he's undefeated for a reason. No heavyweights can beat him, man. We'll see. Yeah, I, I think I think I'm gonna go with you as well. I think I'm gonna go Fury. Um, hey Ricky, I know you're a little dog whisperer. So what did your dog tell you to go for? I said <laughs> <laughs> no. We're gonna we're gonna borrow you some burgers right now. So I think my oh. wife opened the the door on the backyard. Oh. Um, yeah. dude, I'm going, I'm going, uh, I'm going Tyson Fury, dude. Uh, like you said, Gopa, that guy's a giant, man. That guy's a giant. Uh, and he, and he moves around like a welterweight, dude. Yeah, he moves. It's crazy. He, and I think that the thing that takes it from me is that he's a good singer. So I think I'm going to go Tyson oh, Fury. My. <laughs> <laughs> he is not a good singer. When he went to the club. <laughs> but he always does. Every time he wins, he, he gets his fucking microphone oh, for singing. God. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Uh, yeah, so Tyson Fury for me. Yeah, I mean, you know, like you guys said, this is a 50 50 fight. It can go either way. Uh, I don't White know about 50 50, but we'll see. I, I mean, I don't know. We'll see. Dillian White will shock the world if he wins, though. Yeah. Am I saying I'll be shocked if he wins? No, because he could very well win, but the world is going to be shocked but if Dillian I White think, wins. Compa, I think you said, it, you said it perfectly. He missed that one. Uh, he remember he didn't go to the promotion. He did the yeah. white. He didn't show up. Yeah, the press. So and him on, being on so quiet. Yeah, there we go. Press conference. Yeah, yeah. He didn't go to the first press conference. And the and whole reason being, they haven't been doing a promotion is because of that. They would have been doing way up more press conferences. But uh, I think I finally think, Dillian White broke his silence and he said the reason he has not been talking is because he said he de- he demands fair. Uh, fair promotion and that this is not the tyson fury show and that's the reason why he stayed quiet um this is not the tyson fury show he's all i demand a fair promotion he's all i'm a man too that has just as much an opportunity of winning as he does so that's why i haven't been talking he's on i've just been focused but obviously on the tyson fury side they're pissed off because they're like hey we're carrying this promotion you're not doing shit but on white sand he's like that's not my obligation my obligation is to show up to the fight and try to win. That's my only obligation. My obligation is not to promote the fight. I don't have yeah. to. And he's right. He doesn't have to. Unless unless it specifically says it in the contract, you have to be at the press conference. You have to be at this and that. Okay, then. But I don't – that I know and of, it, there's and no contracts out and there And it's that crazy that. because also that, that goes to show you that Dillian White is focused. He's yeah. not playing mind games with the uh, yeah. gypsy king and I think he's going to show up and, and he's going to put on a show. If, if anything, by him staying quiet, it's fucking with Tyson Fury. Yeah, exactly. As, strong, yes, as, yes. as mentally strong as Tyson Fury is, or well, you can say he's mentally strong because he, he went through that depression and, and stuff before, after defeating Klitschko, um, uh, he, he had his fair share of mental and, health And issues. you know, gypsy and you know, the gypsy king, he loves to shit talk. So oh, he hasn't he been able it. to do this. He hasn't been able to do that, no. and maybe it's fucking with him. He's like, yeah, man, yeah. this motherfucker really – he really yeah. didn't show up. Yeah, Like, Because yeah. most people got – I mean, shit, if I got an opportunity to fight Tyson Fury, even if I got my ass knocked out, I'd be going, like, get my 15 minutes of fame. You know what I mean? Like, shit. Yeah. But Dillian White's like, nope, I'm not having it. So yeah. I don't know. We're still going Fury. I don't like Fury, guys, you know. But really? He, he – I never remember when we were going uh, Fury Wilder. I always uh, picked Wilder. I just don't like Fury uh, on a yeah. personal. I mean, I don't know him personally, but just going off of what he shows in the media, I don't like the guy. I don't like him, but he got to give they, it to him. He is a good boxer. It's your opinion, Copa. We hear yeah. boxing talk. We respect everybody's opinion. If you don't like the guy, <laughs> you don't like the guy. <laughs> I don't. I, don't, I hate Ryan Garcia. Now that we're not, in that, he's just not. Now that we open that up. Dude. Yeah. Now that we open that up, I hate Ryan Garcia. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> he hates oh, everyone. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, guys. But other than that, guys, I think I, in both fights, we both agreed to the same fighters. Uh, so yeah. whether we both all take L's this weekend or we all take, you know, dubs, um, or hopefully we do. And speaking about that, we're going on to our leaderboard. Uh, so, you know, like we say every week, we like to keep track of, you know, how many Ricky likes to call it guesses, I guess. I guess that's what we're doing now. But they are. Picks, nah. Nah, these are. <laughs> if you're doing guesses, that's your fault. This is strategic. Freaking well, yeah, we're guessing. Picking. We're guessing. Okay, I'm guessing this guy's going to win. You know what I mean? Uh, 
Okay, let's call it predictions. Okay. Uh, predictions. Our so predictions. predictions here. Uh, we got, you know, we keep track. And you got myself with 28 and 6. Uh, Kike, 25 and 9. And then you got Ricky, 23 and 11. Um, so, obviously, you know, there's there's some wrong picks from all of us. Uh, but it's just something fun we like to keep track. And I think at the end of the year, the, the loser has to take... Uh, or wear a tutu and just walk yeah. around for the whole day. <laughs> so, Ricky, you better try to get up to uh, Enrique. Hey, he's, he's only he's only he's only two he's only two <laughs> behind. Yeah, like we and I'm only three. It. I'm only three behind hey, on, that, on you. That that'd be so funny to see Kike and a little tutu just running around his neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, <I don't> <laughs> <what the fuck>. <laughs> <laughs> you would want to see me in a tutu, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to see your crusty ass and nothing. <laughs> Weren't you just the one saying, oh, I'd love to see Kiki in a tutu? How do you know he has a crusty ass? <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> Fucking old dingleberry ass. <laughs> uh, but, you know, other than that, guys, you know, we do appreciate you guys listening. You know, we like to throw in jokes like that and fuck with each other. Not one, well, not the fuck. Uh, well. Don't <laughs> Throw this Ta- shit with whoa, each take other. Take it easy there, Juan. <laughs> look at look at Cole's face. He's like, what the? <laughs> What's going on here? We like to talk with each other. Is that better? This ain't boxing anymore. What's going on, Juan? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, we like to joke around with each other, guys. And uh, it's something fun we like to do all the time. Uh, just to keep it a little bit entertaining and, you know, juicy. Um, but other than that, uh, <laughs> you guys got anything else to add? I, I, I don't do this to keep it juicy, Juan. If I say shit about you, it's because I mean it. <laughs> and I don't know, man. You see the sentences we we fuck with each other. We keep it juicy. <laughs> what the fuck? I did it on purpose. Like, I don't know, know man. Like Cole laughing in the back so hard. Cole, Cole, I think this is your cue to cut the episode, dude. <laughs> the, at, uh, like at the very uh, instance, uh, I was looking at Cole, and Cole was like mid laugh, and he wanted to laugh so hard. So I was like, "Oh, it's at the juicy." So I paused and I said, "Juicy for a reason." <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh my god! god. Uh, but you know, guys, in all seriousness, thank you guys for listening to us, and we do appreciate you guys reaching out to us on Instagram, and, and you know, uh, to all our fans out there, it is great seeing that we you know we're still having traction out there, and we still have the numbers up, and we still keep getting new followers each week. Uh, we do appreciate that, guys. Um, for, are we at tw- or... we're at twenty five hundred now for IG, or we're almost at twenty five hundred? Yeah, that's pretty uh, cool, man. We we are at yeah yeah oh yeah literally we're at twenty we're two thousand four hundred ninety seven. Nice, dude. Yeah. Thank you, guys. We never thought shit. We I never thought we'd be in the thousand. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, yeah, yeah guys. Thank you for continue to tune in. Uh, continue to tune in. Um, we must be doing something right, I guess. Uh, but yeah, guys, um, if you guys ever just want to tune in to get your most recent boxing news, the fights that are coming up, the fights that have happened, this is your boxing, uh, channel to come to, um, as of right now, other than the major, major ones that actually get paid to do so, um, we're out there, dude. We do this for a passion. we We do this out of passion, uh, we're, we're coming out with weekly episodes, keeping you guys updated. That's just what we do. That's how passionate we are. Uh, I don't see any other boxing podcast doing the same as us, man. So we're, we're all putting in work, it's, man. And it's crazy you say that, Kiki, because every time like when you search on like Apple Podcasts, ours is like the third or the fourth one, th- third or fourth one available for people to listen, yeah. which is pretty Little cool. by little, man. Little by little. You never know who uh, who's it. out there listening. And yeah, in the boxing guys. genre, we're like in third place, so that's good. We're, yeah, we're exactly. The, we, we were what? The first time we ever got a message was like, we were you guys are number 238 in the in the sports yeah. industry, something like that. Yeah. So, yeah. We were like that's 238 crazy. out of... We were number two thirty eight out of a uh, hundred and fifty somehow. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and, and and then and that's how cool how Ashton Sills. Now that we spoke about him today, how how her uh, his prom, I don't know who she is. Uh, what does she do for him? She's the promoter, oh Jen. Right? She's like yeah Jen. Yeah, she's the create like a creative director, a content right? creator, so she, right? Yeah, she does like all yeah. his videos. Yes, and yes, okay. His interviews and Basically, all that. And how she, yeah, yeah, exactly. And how she found us, that was pretty Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty yeah. So yeah, she said yeah. that she found us through the, through the same thing, just searching up our names on on uh, Apple 
Uh, and uh, because we had boxing in our title, boxing talk, and that's how they yeah. found us. Yeah. Pretty cool. So that's that's crazy. Um, so yeah, you know, guys, thank you guys. You know, once again, uh, you guys have anything else to add? No, you said it all. Just all follow right, us on Instagram guys, for for those of you guys that are Ricky fans. Ricky will not be in the episode oh, next week. Sorry, he guys. will be back for episode sixty-two. So uh, yeah, I can't even. I can't even call. I I, I do have Wi-Fi at, at the house over there. Never know. We could test it, but we don't want to bug. Yeah, you probably bad, man. That'd probably be bad though. Back we could test it out though. We'll see. Oh we're no! Then I gotta take all this. That yeah. We're gonna get that. Vo- or that I think I think you could. Wi-Fi. I think you could record yeah. on your on your on your phone actually. Well, We'll see. Yeah. We'll test it out. We'll see if we can make it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I'll dedicated we are, guys. Ricky in his vacation yeah. in a different country. Hey, <laughs> Kike. And remember that time oh. that uh, I went to Hawaii and I was watching the Canelo fight while I was driving out there? Or yeah, or, uh, yeah, or like Juan's been in the middle of parties, literally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, that, for that episode, He's... I low key had to like, I had to go into like deep into my closet because honestly, whoa. you could hear the music. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. <laughs> my, cl- Anyways. my clothes closet. Is that, is that better? Clothes. Wait, like, what? Like, Cl- tire, Bro, tire. that's the way. That's the closet. What other closet is there? What are you talking I know. about? I do. How many anyways? closets yo, do you have? What the? Yo, yo, what? nah, yo. Anyways, no, but I saw. Hey, Kwang was over there dancing. Yeah, so I'm for boxy talk. Yeah. Yeah, guys. Uh, but, all right, guys. Thank you so much, and thank you for listening. We'll see you in the next one. Peace. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.